data is corrupt now. Why did you use inner join in place of left outer join? The data is corrupt now. Why did you use inner join in place of left outer join? Inner join in place of left outer join. Hi everyone, I am Nitin. Welcome back to my channel. Let me ask you one question. Did you like the video intro today? I hope you never get similar call the next day of your production code deployment. It is horror, believe me. I am back with the new tutorial video and in this tutorial we will see when should you use inner join or left outer join. Now this is not a video where I will explain in detail about different joins in SQL. If you want me to cover that, let me know in the comment section below and I will create a separate video for it in the future. Coming to today's video, I have been writing SQL queries for over a decade now. I can say the number one confusion beginners have in writing SQL queries is they don't know when to use inner join or left join in the query. Let me address one more question right now. Why are we talking about inner and left join only? What about self join, right join, full outer join? What about the one famous for bad reasons, the one and only cross join? The simple answer is you shall be using inner and left join for more than 80% of the queries you will be writing in the project. So no harm in focusing little more on these two types of joins. Now the actual question comes, how do you determine whether to use inner join or left join in the query? I will be answering this question with the help of 5 tips. Tip number 1. Try to understand the business requirement. Now you may think that this is a very generic approach, but let me tell you how you can make it more specific. Let's look at example. Can you tell me for all the customers, check how many orders have they placed in last one year? What will you use here? Will you use inner join to join customer and orders table or you will use left outer join here? And do you know the reason behind it? So mostly you will go for the left outer join in this case. And why so? Because there could be some customers who did not place any order in the last one year and you want such customers as well in the output. Try to understand what exactly is the business requirement. Why are you running this query? How the business will use the output data? The business will determine which customers they might have to upgrade. The business might be categorizing customers in silver, gold, diamond, platinum like that categories. If there is a customer who is making a lot of orders in the last one year, the business want to promote it to one level up. So it could be like the customer is presently at gold tier, you want to upgrade it to diamond tier because he has done a lot of purchase in last one year. Similarly, there is a customer who has not made any order in the last one year. So you may want to downgrade that customer score. So from diamond, you may want to bring it down to gold or maybe silver. In this case, as for this business requirement, you want all the customers. So you will probably go for the left outer join here. Similarly, if I ask you another question, give me a list of all the customers with total order value worth more than $1,000 in last one year. Now tell me in this case, which type of join you will use, whether it will be inner join between customer and orders table or it will be a left outer join. You will probably go with the inner join in this case. Why? Because you want basically all the customers that have made some order. So you know that the entry will be there in the orders table as well for those customers and the value should be more than $1,000 in the last one year. So you are pretty sure that you are looking for only those customers that have made at least one order worth of $1,000 in last one year. So in this case, probably you will go with the inner join. I hope you understand my approach to these questions. Try to understand the business requirement. If you are running any SQL query, how the output can be used by the business team. I know that you cannot develop this overnight and this will take some time. But what you can do in the meantime? This brings me to my tip number two. Tip number two is you have to check for not null and null column data type in the query. Let's look at this query now. In this query, I'm doing a join between two tables and I'm fetching some columns and then I'm loading a third table. This tip is basically for the absolute beginners who does not have any data insight, who does not have any business knowledge and they are just given this query to work with. Let's talk about the author name column. Author name column is coming from T2 table. 
should i use inner join here i don't know but what i can do is for this target column author name i'll check and what is the constraint on this column particularly about not null and null constraint so there can be few multiple cases depending on whether this column is defined as not null or nullable in the ta target table similarly this column is coming from t2 table so in the t2 table also i'll check whether this column is declared as null or not null column in the table if the column is mandatory in source and target both it is safe to assume that it is going to be an inner join because since it is a kind of a mandatory column in the source you will have some legit value here there are high chances that you will have a proper value for this column and since it is de declared as mandatory in the target you should get some value also here there are high chances that you can go for inner join in this case what if the source and target both have this column declared as null so in that case i may go for left outer join because output of left outer join may come as null since the column is already declared as null in the source and null in the target as well i may go for left outer join in this case third situation where the source has this column as nullable but the target has declared this column as mandatory or not null so in that case again i'll go for the left outer join i may want to get a default value for this column i'll repeat third case the source has defined this column as nullable whereas target has defined this column as mandatory so i can get null from this table while fetching this column and if that's the case i want a default value for this column this is not like maths where you can do 2 plus 3 and it will always give 5 so you have to be little cautious while using this tip also you have to understand just like you are starting with your sql journey even the data modeler who might have done physical data model or designed the table structure could be new too so he might have missed not null or null constraints at the table level similarly the business analyst who has given you the requirement or given you the source to target mapping or he might have missed this not null null constraint use this tip but with caution now let's move to the tip number 3 whenever you are in doubt go for left outer join if you have to make an educated guess that okay whether this should be inner join or left outer join go for left outer join the reason is very simple you will not lose data left outer join behaves like inner join plus some extra records so if you were supposed to go with inner join and you mistakenly went ahead with left outer join you will end up having few extra records cleaning that is fairly straightforward because in left outer join the additional records which you have passed might have null values for some columns coming from the non driving table so cleaning the output of a left outer join is fairly easy but if you'll go for the inner join where actually left outer join was required you will lose much data and that lost data you have to reload the file and run the process again to get that if you are really clueless you don't know what to do whether inner join or left outer join to be on the safer side you can go ahead with left outer join now i don't want to over complicate here by considering downstream applications that might have source data from a target we can park that for now also it is less hurting than inner join you may say that left outer join will hurt the query performance when compared to inner join the answer is straightforward if you do not have accurate and complete data then no one will ask you if you loaded wrong data in 5 seconds or 5 hours the data quality always precedes query performance i cannot think of any use case right now where speed matters more than the data quality if you can then please drop a comment below so tip number 3 was use left outer join if you are confused coming to tip number 4 build your business data warehouse understanding and try to understand your data tip number 1 was specific to a business requirement while you are writing an sql query specific to that transaction but in tip number 4 i am telling you that you have to build your domain knowledge you have to understand your business and you have to understand your data try to identify important tables which you are seeing in join queries very often try to see how these tables are loaded what are the mandatory columns what is the default value for any important column why this will help you is tomorrow when you are bringing in that table to join with some other table at the back of your mind you will know that these are mandatory columns or these are important columns or at the time of loading these columns always come from source if you have that understanding this will help you take a call whether you want to go with the left outer join or inner join 
Let me give you one more example to say you have a web portal. The customers can come and they can place their order that since you have made username column as a mandatory column, whenever you are mapping an order to a user, you will know that username will always exist. So you can go for the inner join in that case. However, you made some changes in the logic. The customers on your web portal can even make an order without signing up into your website. They will be treated as a guest user. With guest user, there is no username attached. So in that case, if that's the scenario, you may want to go for the left outer join. Because if you'll go with the inner join order and customers, you may not have username for that particular customer. It is stuck to the generic username, which is guest. It's a hypothetical situation, but the point I'm trying to make here is you should try to learn your domain, your important tables, what kind of data you are storing, how you are loading. Basically, you have to understand more about the metadata of those tables. This will really help you long term. Also, you will build domain knowledge in addition to your technical skills. This will really help you grow in your career. Tip number five, look out for the hint keywords in the business requirement. Whenever there is any business requirement given to you, there will be some hint keywords embedded in that requirement. I'm talking about plain English. Let's look at some of the examples we discussed earlier. Here, for all the customers, check how many orders have they placed in last one year. The hint keyword I see here is all the customers. This clearly tells me that I have to go for left outer join. Let's look at the next example. Give me a list of customers with total order value worth more than $1,000 in last one year. The keyword I'm looking at here is list of customers this is giving me an indication that i have to go for inner join because all the customers is not expected i can give you some more examples let's look at this one for each and every customer find the number of orders placed in last one year again the keyword i'm looking at is each and every customer so this gives me an indication that i may have to go for left outer join here look for such keywords all the customers list of customers each and every customers try to identify such keywords in plain english also you can identify these keywords and that can also help you in understanding whether you have to go for left outer join or inner join for this query that these are tips from my personal observation and my experience you will not find these tips anywhere in the book and also you don't have to adhere to these tips these are just the general guidelines based on my experience and observation. It is not mandatory that if I'm saying left outer join, it will always be the case. A lot depends on the data. That's why you have to understand your business data. You have to understand your tables. You have to understand business requirement till then. Maybe you can play with the technical tips like looking for the columns, whether it is defined as not null or not. Another tip could be looking for the keywords in the business requirement. You don't have to abide by these tips. So please use these tips with caution and uh, try to build understanding of your data as quickly as possible. That's it guys. This is all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hope you liked the video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. Which one of these five tips did you like the most? Also, I'm putting a lot of effort to come up with such videos for you. I will really appreciate it if you can share it with your friends. If you are new to the channel, I'll also request you to subscribe to my channel. Or if you have any feedback for me, please drop a comment below. I read each and every comment on my videos. That's it guys. That's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.